Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Today marks the final day of 2022 and what a year it was. Today I'm going to crown what I believe to be the BOA of the year for 2022. This is the BOA that has had the biggest impact on the BOA hobby and the biggest growth in popularity in my humble, subjective and unscientific opinion. So first of all, Happy New Year to everybody or Happy Almost New Year. I think a lot of us are probably pretty happy to see the year end. 2022 in general was a pretty crappy year for most people. However, I would have to say for the boa hobby and for boa keepers, it was a really, really good year. I think that the hobby continues to grow in popularity, particularly the locality boa hobby. As you're probably aware, there was a big uptick in popularity of locality boas after the COVID hit and people were at home and they had more time to spend at home and more money to spend on their pets. And with that, a lot of more people were getting into locality boas and discovering just how rewarding it is to work with these types of animals. There have always been quite a few locality boas that have gone under the radar. They're not quite as flashy as you know the true red tails and some of the more colorful animals out there that everybody thinks are the ultimate in boas. But a lot of these animals have just recently uh, caught fire in popularity and skyrocketed and now everybody wants them although the supplies of some of these boas remain very tight and there's one boa in mind that best embodies this over the last year and if you haven't guessed yet that's the boa that i'm holding the tar humara boa or tar humara mountain dwarf boa and this is truly a great boa that's i think really come into its own in the year 2022 so i've always loved these animals i've been keeping them for about 10 years now um, one of my, I think this was the first uh, dwarf boa that I bred actually. Uh, but for a while they just weren't all that popular. You know, they tend to be not as flashy as some of the other boas. They're darker colored in general. People over miss or people overlook their iridescence and their subtle green and blue and pink tones. But this is really a great boa to keep with a lot of positives going for it. The most obvious, as you can see from looking at this adult female, is the size. These animals are arguably the smallest of the locality boas and top out at about four or four and a half feet in length. Uh, this is a, this female is a, uh, going on six years old now, had her first litter this year, uh, you know, full grown Tarahumara Mountain Dwarf boa. But you just can't beat the size for somebody that wants the full boa constrictor experience in a more portable pint size package. And they have all of the great behaviors that we associate with the larger boas in a more manageable size. So the perfect pet for someone that doesn't have a lot of space but wants the boa constrictor experience. I've been getting more and more interest in these animals in 2022. Lots of people checking in to see if I have babies available. I did have one litter in 2022 from this female and they went really, really quickly. Being a dwarf boa, they have relatively small litters, anywhere from about five to about 15 babies or so on average. So I, you know, there's a limited reproductive potential for each of these animals. And then there's just not too many people working with them. There's just a handful of breeders uh, in, the, in the United States that have these animals that are producing them. So there's a very limited supply to go with the increase in demand that we've seen in the last year. So why have these mini boas become so much more popular in 2022? Well, I think locality boas in general have become more and more popular over the last few years. And 2022 was no exception as more people enter this uh, facet of the hobby and start their collections of these beautiful constrictors. But I think with regards to the Tarahumara boa, I think that the popularity of darker, you know, less brightly colored boas has been increasing in the last four or five years. And the poster child for this um, Ten trend has been the Argentine boa. So Argentine boas are another really dark boa with a beautiful iridescence and a beautiful dark pattern. And I think that a lot of people see in the Tarahumara boa basically a mini Argentine boa. So these guys have a lot of the same types of markings. They have a similar color scheme with, you know, overall they're a darker colored boa, but they have lots of beautiful um, colors if you look closely as far as pinks and blues and greens, lots of beautiful iridescence. 
And then their behavior is also different from most other boas. You know, they tend not to move around as much, these Tarahumara boas. They tend to be a little less active, which is also similar to the Argentine boas. And then their overall personality and demeanor is similar to the Argentine boas. So if you read some of the older books and magazines on both Argentine boas and uh, Mexican boas, including the Tarahumara boas, they'll tell you that these animals are, are aggressive and hiss and bite and all that. And this is really not true. So these animals are more likely to vocalize, they're more likely to hiss, especially as babies, but it's mostly a bluff. They almost never will bite. So it's kind of comical that the baby Tarahumaras are hissing and hissing and they kind of try to strike at me and even if they do they don't even break the skin they're you know so small as babies and i've seen the same thing with baby argentines they'll be hissing and hissing and you pick them up and they just continue hissing but they don't bite and then they almost always calm down around six months a year tops of age and they become very docile handleable animals so i think people finally realized not to believe all of this erroneous literature on these animals and that they can really make great pets that are enjoyable to handle and beautiful to look at. Another advantage at these is that these animals tend to be uh, easier as far as the husbandry because they're from a more temperate climate, either Northern Mexico or Argentina. They don't have quite the same um, requirement for very strict husbandry. And you know, if your environment gets a little bit colder, it's really not as big of a deal. They're, in general, they're more hardy than the more tropical types of boa constrictors. So I think people discover this and then, you know, with social media such as this channel and people posting pictures of their animals on Facebook, people became more and more into them. Um, and now I believe that these are one of the hottest boas that is going right now. And for that reason, I am proclaiming that the Boa of the year for 2022 is the Tarahumar Mountain Boa. And this is a female uh, from the Rio Bravo bloodline, born here back in 2017, doing very well, had her first litter. So she's not breeding this year, but uh, if things go as planned, she'll be breeding, breeding in the 2023 to 2024 breeding season. I do have some animals paired up right now, so I'm hoping to have a litter of these beautiful animals in the summer, but we'll just have to see. Unfortunately, there's no guarantees. Although in general, the Tarahumara boas are a little bit more straightforward to breed than the true red tails and some of the other types of boa constrictors. And just before I forget, um, these are technically a different species from most other boa constrictors. So boa constrictors were once one species with about nine or 10 different subspecies. About five years ago, they were reclassified as three separate species, boa constrictor, boa imperator, and boa sigma. And so this animal, which was previously classified as a subspecies of boa constrictor, boa constrictor imperator, is now classified as boa sigma. Here's another uh, Tarahumara boa. This guy is a male born here in 2018 and this guy is from a different mother from the female I just showed you who has more of a pinkish coloration and this guy inherited a lot of that pink coloration. He also inherited this circle back pattern. He's got these beautiful ovals between his saddles. You know, incidentally the Tarahumara boas have a higher saddle count than most other boas somewhere in the mid 20s or so. And in general, the pattern is a little bit more reticulated and broken up than the true boa constrictors, you know, like the red tail boas, etc. So these guys come to us from northern Mexico within about 100 miles of the U.S. border, and they live in these sky islands above the surrounding desert. Um, these sky islands are basically isolated habitat at higher elevation that has more rain and you know cooler temperatures than the surrounding desert. But because of this, these boas are kind of trapped in their own little environment. And there's not a lot of mixing of the genes with you know new boas coming into those environments. So it's basically a area where evolution proceeds at a very rapid pace. So studying these animals is just very fascinating from a evolutionary perspective. And part of the reason why I enjoy uh, working with locality boas so much. So this guy is, he was actually, uh, he successfully bred this year, even at, you know, four and a half years old and about maybe four feet, maybe even a little bit less than four feet. So 
relatively small boa, you know, but has reached reproductive age. These animals, because of their small size, of course, they don't need as large of an enclosure as a larger boa constrictor. And I find that the vision boa tubs, the 30 by 40 inch boa tubs that I build racks for, work ideally as homes for these animals, even as adults. Um, the smaller animals I keep mostly in rack systems and smaller racks. Um, but in general, one of the advantages of these animals is their easier husbandry and their uh, smaller space requirements because of their diminutive, diminutive size. Here's another male. This guy is a year older than the male I just showed you. He was born in 2017. Also a proven breeder, first time in 2022. And this guy is um, from the Rio Bravo bloodline. Uh, if you look closely, you can see the beautiful patterns and colors that these animals show off. I also really like handling these animals. They just have a really good feel in the hand. They will wrap, but not too tightly. Not nearly as tight as a true rat tail, but they hold on and you can feel the muscle. And then they also don't move around quite as much as most other boas. Although this guy is kind of exploring right now, moving a little bit more than they usually do. And I kind of like that as well because when I want to take out a bow, I don't want an animal that's going to uh, kind of go spastic and f f flail around everywhere. I want one that's just going to kind of hang out and explore inquisitively. So incidentally, ball pythons, of course, are known not for their activity. They're known for kind of just sitting there. Some people even call them pet rocks. And I would say that the tower humor are the most like a ball python in terms of the reduced activity, although they do move around quite a bit more than most ball pythons I've seen. So kind of a nice happy medium, a boa that you can take out and handle and enjoy that's not going to try to escape and go crazy. These are some of the reasons why tar humora mountain boas are such a great boa to work with and why they are the boa of the year for 2022. I'm going to show you one of my whole back babies from 2022 and I just pulled the tub out of the rack. I'm actually still keeping her in a 16 liter or 16 quart Sterilite tub and this should be a good size for probably about another year or so. She's just hiding there. So there she is, and she's still quite a tiny little boa, I would say. Probably about a foot and a half at this point, maybe a little, a little bit closer to two feet. But uh, definitely not a big boa. But although she has put on quite a bit of size since she was born about six months ago. And she's actually the only one that I held back this year. There was so much demand, uh, the others went really quickly. But just wanted to keep at least one just for a future breeder and hopefully she'll be ready about uh, five years or so from now to enter into breeding trials. But she's doing real well. She actually is eating frozen thawed. Uh, sometimes the dwarf boas and the island boas will have a difficulty switching over from the live to frozen thawed. She's eaten a couple of frozen thawed but the last time I fed her a frozen thawed she actually ended up spitting it out and I found it on the bottom of the enclosure the next day. Mm -hmm. So the last couple times I just gave her a live one just so it would be a little bit easier. Uh, but she's doing real well. Usually she hisses a bit, but looks like she's in a calmer mood today. But the hissing is nothing to be concerned about because these boas are mostly just putting on a bluff. They're really not aggressive animals and generally the hissing stops by the time they're about six months to a year old. I hope you enjoyed this look at my pick for the boa constrictor of the year, the Tarahumara Mountain Boa. And I'd be interested in hearing what you have to say. Uh, if you have another type of boa that you feel deserves the title of Boa of the Year for 2022, please comment below. As always, if you have any questions or comments about these animals or any other topic in boas, feel free to shoot me a line. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.